Hey guys, so today I just want to briefly show you also how to uh, use the layers function in Rhino. And usually, uh, you know, for all these beginning exercises, there's really not a need to use layers. But as you start building more complex models, you'll see that layers are a really useful tool uh, to keep your model organized and to uh, hide things at certain moments if you don't need to see them or to prevent uh, you from making changes to certain elements uh, at certain moments so that you don't make any mistakes. Okay, so as you can see, I'm starting here with three objects and they're all on the same layer currently because uh, I'm just using the default layers. So the first thing is to locate where your layers information is. And if you look at this uh, panel here, which we didn't talk about really at the beginning, uh, if you look at all these tabs, those all are different functions. And the one that looks like a pie uh, with the three different colors, that's the layers uh, tab, okay? So if you go ahead and click on that, uh, you'll see that uh, by default, Rhino always starts out with your default layer and it is your selected layer. So it has that little arrow. So if I actually wanna change my, def uh, my default build layer to something else, all I have to do is just click on a different layer in that same sort of tab area. And you'll see now it, it's highlighted. So if I were to build anything new, so let's say I wanna make another box, type box, and you'll see that automatically that box is in that layer. Okay, so the thing that you should also notice immediately is that the layers have different layer colors. Uh, you can select any kind of color that you want. Uh, just double click on the color uh, and you can go ahead and make it anything else. So I'll go ahead and make this one a slightly different uh, magenta, okay? And, and the there is a difference here between that and the actual material of that, of that object. Uh, we can talk about that here in just a second, but you can see that all of them materially are still white. And so if I were to go into my render view, you'll see that they still all look rendered in the same material, okay? Uh, not that important for uh, material, like for management, but for output, maybe in the future it will be, okay? But when you're actually in your shaded view, you'll see that you'll see the, uh, sort of the, the layer color as the denominator, okay? Great, so now if you wanna change the layer of an object, for example, the sphere, I would like to make it uh, part of the layer one. What I do is I select the sphere, right? So go ahead and just select that by uh, left clicking. Uh, and then you right click on the layer that you want to put it in and you'll see that it opens up all this information all these tabs, and then down at the bottom, you'll see one that says change object layer. Uh, if you click on that one, then you'll see that your object changes to that layer. So I can go ahead and do that for all of these. And this one, I'll go ahead and put it in the green layer. Okay, so now I have all my objects in different layers, right? If you want to name your layers, all you have to do is double click on that or right click there and type rename layer, okay? And now I can, you know, I can call this magenta or you can uh, type anything that you want, okay? And again, if you at any point choose to change your default build layer, you can always just change it to be anything else, okay? Once you've done this, now one of the advantages is that you can lock certain layers. So for example, I could lock layer, the red layer. And that means that when I go to select it, select items, I will select things other than on that layer. So it's still visible, but I cannot edit it. Okay, obvious, uh, that seems pretty simple. And then the other thing that you can do is you can go ahead and hide layers, right? So you can turn them on and off. Okay. Um, an important thing to know is if you do certain commands that affect each other. So let's say, for example, I move these two together and a, I do a Boolean join or a Boolean reunion. Well, it failed. Uh, I wonder why it failed, that's interesting. So let's try it again.
Okay. I'm getting an intercept. Ah, I know on it. So I'm getting an in. And it's not working because this is not a solid object. So before that, I'm going to go ahead and make this a solid object. Okay. And now if I take these two and I do a Boolean union, you'll see that what it does is it makes the union. So it makes it follows the command, right? But but it also changes the, the objects to be on the top layer. Right. So in terms of the organization, the green layer was below the uh, magenta layer. And so therefore, that's why that happened. OK, you can also change layer, the organization layer, and you can put layers within layers. Right. So you just saw that I went ahead and uh, put that layer within layer one. So um, there's all sorts of layer management that you can do. Right. If that were the case. If at any point I turn off layer uh, one or the red layer, it will also affect this one, right? So we'll see here. Okay. If I were to do the same thing with this one and throw it in front of that one, there we go. You'd see that as soon as I turn all those off, those are turned off. Okay. So there you go. That's that's layer management plus a little uh, mistake here that we needed to fix before we saw what would happen when we uh, use a command uh, with objects in two different layers, all right? So there you go. See you guys in the next one.